Hello everyone. This is George from Invensys Learning. Welcome to our YouTube channel. I am sure you guys might have heard of cybersecurity. In today's session, we are going to have a brief tutorial about cybersecurity for beginners. So, without any further delay, let's get started. We will begin this session by discussing a little about what is cybersecurity. Next, we will move further on to the history of hacking and security and talk about CIA triad, along with an example. Post that, we will take a look at why we need cybersecurity. And then, elements of network security. Moving on, we will discuss the types of cyber attacks, then case study, then basic practices and methods to avoid cyber attacks. We will then talk about job prospects and market trends in cybersecurity and the role of cybersecurity analysts. And finally, we will end this session by discussing the top 10 cybersecurity certifications and training. I hope the agenda is clear to you guys. We will now begin the presentation and understand what is cybersecurity. So, what is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is the set of practices used to protect computers, computer servers, mobile devices, various electronic systems, communications and computer networks, and data from malicious attacks and threats. It is also known as information technology security or electronic information security. Let us discuss an example of cybersecurity. This is about a cyber attack conducted on the United Nations website. On August 11, 2007, the United Nations website was hacked by Turkish hacker Kerem125. The United Nations official website was hacked and displayed a message that protested the USA and Israeli policies in the Middle East region. This message was seen in the section of the site reserved to statements by Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. The message also appeared on other web pages that usually display quotes and speeches from the Secretary General. After the hacking, the United Nations website showed the message, hacked by Karim 125M0 Stead and Z that is cyber protest hate Israel and USA don't kill children and other people peace forever no war. This message was displayed continuously on the website. The hacker group called themselves Cyber Protest, a three-member group of Karim 125, M0 Stead, and Z, and pseudonames generally used by hackers. They also hacked websites of Harvard University, the United Nations Environment Program, and companies like Toyota and Nestle. Hacking has been done even before the advent of computers and the internet, where phones and communication lines used to be tapped to gain information. Let us now look into the history of hacking and security. The timeline of hacking and security started in 1962 with the first troll attack, when MIT or Massachusetts Institute of Technology sets up passwords for computers, for sustaining time limits and student privacy. A punch card was made by a student Alan Scher who tricked the computer into printing off passwords. He then used them to log in as other people after his time limit is completed. He even shared these passwords with his friends, also called as Troll, which was the first of its kind. They also made fun of their teacher by hacking into his account and leaving different messages. In 1969, a UCLA student tried to transmit the word login to another computer at the Stanford Research Institute over the ARPANET, a precursor to today's internet. After the alphabets I and O are sent, the system immediately crashes. So, the first message ever sent on the internet was low. However, after one hour, the full word login was immediately sent after recovering from the crash. In 1970, Nokia and Motorola were hacking victims when Kevin Mitnick broke into one of the world's most highly protected networks. He did this, using social engineering methods, pretending to insiders so that they hand over passwords and codes, and then use the codes to access internal computer systems. He was one of the most wanted hackers of the time. In 1972, a message said, I'm the creeper, catch me if you can. Creeper, the first computer virus in history, was developed by Bob Thomas, a programmer at BBN Technologies. After infecting a computer, Creeper will display its message, and start printing a file and, before the printing would be finished, jump to the next computer across the network, disappearing from the first. Reaper, the first antivirus was developed against Creeper. Rabbit virus arrived very shortly after Creeper, in particular, in 1972. The main difference is that the rabbit virus reproduced itself on the affected computer until it takes over the system and causes it to crash. In 1979, Mitnick gained unauthorized access to a computer network. His friend gave him the phone number for the ARK. ARK is a computer system that Digital Equipment Corporation or DEC used to develop its operating system software called RSTS-E. 
Mitnick copied Dex company software by breaking into its computer network. This was called the ARK cyber attack. In 1986, Hess, Dirk, and Peter Carl hacked into the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory Systems. Hess also hacked into United States, Europe, and East Asia, military and industrial computers, and sold the information to the Soviet Union KGB. Hess is estimated to have hacked into 400 USA military computers with information access to space, aircraft, satellite, and other confidential information. In 1987, the first publicly documented removal of a computer virus was performed, by Brent Fix in the year 1987. An antivirus program to counter the Polish MKS virus was released in 1987. This gave birth to the first commercial antivirus in the world. In 1990, the English computer journal PC Today reported about the disc killer virus. Each issue of the magazine was accompanied by a disc. The July issue was infected with a copy of the disc killer. More than 50,000 copies were sold. Disc killer was unable to spread because of a bug in the infection routine. PC Today launched a recall and tightened virus protection measures for the future. In 1999, Melissa virus, a macro virus, was circulated as an email attachment that, when opened, disables a number of safeguards in the Microsoft Word 97 or Word 2000, and, if the user has the Microsoft Outlook email program, causes the virus to be recirculated to the first 50 people in each of the user's email address books. Melissa virus had the potential to disable corporate and any other mail servers as the ripple of email distribution becomes a much larger wave. Melissa virus caused the Microsoft Corporation to shut down the incoming email. In 2000, there was a problem called the Y2K problem or Y2K bug, where the dates beyond December 31, 1999 would be interpreted as 00 for 1900 instead of 2000. For this, programmers used a technique called windowing, which would take all dates from 00 to 20 as from the 2000s, and not from the 1900s. Also in the year 2000, the first free antivirus was released in the market. In 2012, an online battle emerged between Saudi Arabia and Israel. A Saudi hacker, called 0x Omar, posted details of 400,000 Saudi citizens' credit cards on the internet. As a retaliation to this, Israeli hackers, broke into the websites of two major Arab banks. In 2013 and 2014, there were two different data breaches on the Yahoo servers, conducted by an unauthorized third party. It was believed that almost 3 billion user accounts were affected during this period. In 2017, there was a ransomware attack, called as the WannaCry attack. We will discuss this in detail in the coming sessions. In 2019, there was a DDoS attack conducted on the New Zealand stock exchange market. This caused the stock exchange market to completely shut down for four days, after the systems crashed. In 2020, 450 active World Health Organization or WHO staff email addresses and passwords were leaked online along with thousands, belonging to others working on the novel coronavirus response. In the same year, over 500,000 Zoom accounts were compromised and sold on the dark web and hacker forums for less than a penny each, and in some cases, given away for free. These were shared, so that hackers can use them in Zoom bombing pranks and malicious activities. As we have seen till now, these cyber attacks and threats, come in all types and sizes, and impact various sectors. The growing cyber attacks cost the world economy more than $1 trillion, almost 1% of the global GDP, where a company or an individual's credentials, their bank account details, and other confidential information is at risk. Let us now discuss about the CIA triad, also called as the Confidentiality, Integrity, and Availability Triad. The CIA triad short form for Confidentiality, Integrity, and availability is a model designed to provide various companies and organizations guidelines to help them create their security policies. Cybersecurity involves protecting data and information from unauthorized access, deletion, or modification to provide confidentiality, integrity, and availability. We will now discuss these components and some of the information security measures designed to assure each of the components' safety. The first one is confidentiality. Confidentiality involves preventing any access of data to unauthorized individuals. It ascertains the identity of authorized personnel involved in sharing and holding data secure, private, and anonymous. Confidentiality can be compromised by hackers who crack poorly encrypted data, incorporate various types of cyber attacks, and disclose sensitive data. This is very important in the context of information security. The second one is integrity. Integrity is usually protecting the information from being altered by unauthorized individuals. It denotes that data and programs can be changed by authorized personnel. Integrity can be compromised, 
especially by cybercrimes when malware is embedded into web pages or when a machine is turned into a zombie computer. This helps the users to trust the system they are putting to use. The third and last one is availability. Availability is ensuring that authorized personnel has access to the data or information when needed. Any data is of high value if the concerned individuals have access to it at the required time. Unavailability of information usually occurs when security incidents such as human error, programming errors, DDoS attacks, or hardware failures. Let us now look into a real-time example, explaining CIA triad. A bank ATM that offers users access to cash, bank balances, and other information is the best example of the CIA triad. It covers all three principles of the CIA triad. It provides confidentiality by ensuring a two-factor authentication, ATM card and password, before allowing access to data. The ATM and bank software incorporate data integrity by ensuring that any transfers or withdrawals made through the ATM are reflected in the accounting for the user's bank account. The ATM provides availability because it is present in a public place and is accessible even when the bank branch is closed. Let us now understand why we need cybersecurity. There are three main reasons why we need cybersecurity. The first one is protection from cyber attacks. The second one is ensure privacy of information. The third and last one is provide guidelines for data security. Let us now look into the elements of network security. There are four elements of network security. The first one is network access control. The second one is firewall security. The third one is intrusion prevention system. The fourth one is security information and event management or short form per seam. Let us now look into each element in detail. Network access control allows the network admin to understand and control who can and cannot access the network. Firewall security decides whether specific traffic in the network has to be blocked or allowed. This is one of the most important elements to maintain protection. Intrusion Prevention System is a threat prevention technology that examines, identifies, and prevents unusual network traffic from exploiting vulnerabilities. SIEM or Security Information and Event Management combines security event management and security information management into one composite security management system. Now, we will discuss about the different types of cyber attacks. What are cyber attacks? A cyber attack is an offensive action taken by a hacker or unauthorized individual or a group of individuals who target computer systems, IT infrastructure, computer networks, mobile devices, and other computer devices by using different methods to break into, steal, damage, or alter crucial data and information. Individuals or groups of individuals who conduct these cyber attacks are called hackers or cyber criminals. Today, Almost 59% of the global population are using the internet either on mobile devices or computers and laptops. There has been tremendous development and growth in technology, and these constant advancements come with many repercussions. Hackers have started coming up with different ways to gain unauthorized access and conduct cyber attacks for monetary and information thefts. Let us look into the different types of cyber attacks. The first type of cyber attack is called phishing. Phishing is one of the most used types of cyber attacks. The attackers, by this method, try to get access to personal information like login credentials, debit or credit card details by pretending themselves as concerned competent authorities. Phishing is executed mainly through emails, messaging, and phone calls. The next type of cyber attack is called the ransomware. In a ransomware attack, the user is compelled to remove all of their data and information from their system if they fail to meet the timeline in paying a ransom declared by cybercriminals. In spite of all this, there is no guarantee as to whether paying the ransom would secure their data or not. Let us now look into a recent 2017 ransomware attack called WannaCry. In the WannaCry attack, the hackers would send a malicious email to make victims click on an attachment or visit a website. The ransomware uses the flaws in the Windows operating system to force it to run the ransomware code in the system. The ransomware then encrypts or locks all the important files in the system and demands a ransom in Bitcoin cryptocurrency. The WannaCry ransomware uses the operating system flaw to replicate itself and spread around the computer network. The hackers, however, made a mistake. A kill switch was discovered by another hacker, which helped in overcoming this attack. Microsoft also released a patch update. Both these measures help the users to regain access to their documents. The next type of cyber attack is called malware. In a malware cyber attack, the hackers create a malware code to hack any electronic or digital device like mobiles, computers, and laptops to obtain unauthorized access. Now we are now going to discuss the man-in-the-middle attack. A man-in-the-middle cyber attack or MITM attack occurs when the hacker places himself in between the client and the owner or between users and the server or between clients and server to misinform the client and get unauthorized access to data and information from the system. In this attack, 
the hacker places himself in the middle of the communication link between the user or client and the server. All data and information transfer of both the user and the server goes through the hacker. This gives the hacker, unsolicited access to complete information of the whole digital system and also the chance to misinform the user or client. This is how the hacker gains complete control over the whole system, the data transferred, and the processes involved in it. However, all the time, both the user and server are unaware of the hacker, and for any outsider, it seems that it is a normal client-server communication system. We will now discuss the next type of cyber attack called as the Trojan Horse. A Trojan Horse or a Trojan is a malware program designed by hackers to break into electronic and digital devices by disguising the program with the necessary software. This type of cyber attack is quite dangerous as it helps the hackers to have unauthorized access to crucial information of users, such as their credentials and financial details. The next type of cyber attack is called as the SQL injection. SQL injection is the latest type of cyber attacks being launched by hackers. This includes incorporating malicious data into the user's digital device to enable the hacker to give unauthorized access to all the crucial and confidential information belonging to the user. We will now see and understand what DOS and DDoS cyber attacks are. In a client-server communication system, there are three level handshakes before the data from the server is transferred to the client system. The first handshake is client's request to the server to load the web page or any result or any content. The second handshake is where the server approves the client's request, gets ready to load, and asks the client device when to load. In the third handshake, the first device acknowledges, and the server loads the request. Error 404 reflects when a web page doesn't load, the website is down, or there is a lot of traffic on the website. It is detrimental to the profits of the organization. This happens when the number of users on the website on that page exceeds the limit the website can handle. Once it exceeds, the page is down, and the users get this error. What happens if someone fakes the number of users currently using the website and the website gets down intentionally? This is precisely what the DOS and DDoS attacks are. The DOS attack stands for Denial of Service Attack. DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service Attack. In a DOS attack, the fake requests are made by the same device to overwhelm the website, causing it to crash. In a DDoS attack, a big network of devices creates a large number of fake requests and together request the server at the same time. In a DDoS attack, big network devices created by the hacker are called botnets. The botnets create a large number of requests, and together all request the server at the same time. One botnet creates one or two requests. In both the attacks, the hacker fakes the number of users currently on the website. Once this number exceeds the limit, the website cannot handle this anymore, and it crashes down. This crashing is done intentionally by the hacker so that it affects the owners of the website. We will now see spear phishing and whale phishing. In a spear phishing attack, a hacker tries to gain unauthorized access to confidential information, by conducting fraudulent emails or phone calls. In a whale phishing attack, a hacker tries to access confidential and sensitive information of powerful and famous personalities like chairman and head of organizations. Let us now discuss drive-by cyber attacks. In a drive-by attack, hackers embed malicious scripts into various websites. Whenever a user tries to visit the website, all the user data is accessible to the hacker. Because of these malicious scripts, the system gets corrupted, giving unauthorized access to data and information to the hacker. The next type of cyber attack is called the spyware. Hackers use cyber attacks called spyware, which is unwanted software to infiltrate into a victim's computer in order to have access to their sensitive information and internet usage data. It is a type of malware that uses malicious software to gain access and damage a computer without the knowledge of the user. There are again four types or categories of spyware commonly called as 1. Adware 2. Keyboard loggers 3. Trojans 4. Mobile spyware the next type of cyber attack is called the adware. The cyber attacks where hackers use various pop-up advertisements to show up on a computer or mobile device are called adware, short for advertising software. The adware can become dangerous by harming your device, hacking into your browser, slowing down the device, and install viruses or spyware or both. The next type of cyber attack is called the eavesdropping attacks. When hackers launch a cyber attack by hacking into cell phones, computers, and laptops by fabricating information in those devices, it is called an eavesdropping attack. This attack is conducted to gain unauthorized access to files by cybercriminals. The next type of cyber attack is called the password attacks. A password attack involves continuous attempts by a hacker to obtain the login credentials of a user. Many hackers use different algorithms or simply make calculated guesses to obtain the password. We will now look into a case study of cybersecurity. Jeep Cherokee is a famous SUV with off-roading capabilities. 
There was a Jeep Cherokee Cybertech in 2015, which turned out to be a turning point for the automobile industry. Charlie Miller and Chris Velasek, two security researchers remotely hacked the Jeep Cherokee vehicle and took over control of its functions, including the air conditioner, radio, wipers, brakes, steering wheel, and accelerator due to a loophole in the car's infotainment system. This was the first time a remote cyber attack was done on a vehicle. Jeep Cherokee was selected because of its simple architecture. After this attack, Fiat Chrysler recalled more than 1 million hackable vehicles for security patch updates. The hackers first targeted the multimedia system by hacking the Wi-Fi and compromising the automatic password generation that occurs each time the car starts. They used hacking techniques to break into the system remotely. The main vulnerability they found out was that the Wi-Fi password is created before the actual date and time are set and is based on a default system time, during which the infotainment system starts. They then took over the infotainment system by exploiting the software. By controlling the infotainment system remotely, various cyber attacks such as changing the air conditioner settings or increasing the fan speed, a sudden change in the volume of the radio, or turning off GPS were launched. Since the car infotainment system uses a cellular connection to provide access to the internet and other services, they exploited this vulnerability to deliver the attack. Let us now look into the solution that was designed for this cyber attack. Harman created a five-step plan to counter future cyber attacks and avoid any in the first place. The five steps are, change organizational structure. Scrutinize third-party software. Proven cybersecurity at the development stage. Create risk analysis of threats. Over-the-air software updates. We will now go through each of the five steps. Organization structure. Harman Kardon, the company whose infotainment system was used as the gateway to launch the attack, changed its organizational structure and appointed cybersecurity professionals to oversee issues at every stage. Scrutiny, the software. At every stage of the production process, create a checklist that involves scanning third-party software for errors and bugs, creating a risk analysis of potential loopholes for every involved component. Proven security. If any new feature or component is added to a vehicle, designers now first have to demonstrate how they would secure the operation from any potential cyber attack which might happen at a future stage. Risk analysis. Creating a risk analysis at every stage of the development process and undertake comprehensive testing to ensure efficiency and avoid any future risks in terms of cyber security. Over-the-air updates. Till now, only security patch updates were released for any cyber attacks, but since automobiles are used over a longer period of time over the air, updates with the latest version for all existing customers is a must. We will now discuss the most crucial part of today's discussion. Basic practices and methods to avoid cyber attacks. Best practices and methods to avoid cyber attacks include the steps and methodologies involved to keep oneself and any organization on the whole, safe and secure, both internally and from any external threats, be it cyber attacks, or any viruses, or computer worms, etc. These practices and methods help in a smooth and safe operating environment, and include Keep your user data private. Check your privacy settings. Update your antivirus. Use strong passwords. Scan emails before opening. Check website URL. Log out as and when required. Respect others. Let us now look into each of these in detail. Data privacy. Always make sure that you keep your data private, so that it reduces the chances of data leakage in the advent of a cyber attack. Strong password. Having a strong password is of utmost importance, since hackers first target the user credentials in order to gain unauthorized access. Privacy settings. Maintaining strong privacy settings to all your work, be it on mobile devices or laptops, or computers, acts as the first line of defense against hackers. Antivirus. Having a reliable and strong antivirus helps against any malicious software, viruses, computer worms, and other programs developed in order to deliver a cyber attack. Scan emails. It is highly recommended to scan your emails before opening them. This helps in a way to avoid the chances of various email hacking attacks usually used by hackers. Website URL. A website that starts with HTTPS is far more secure than the ones that start with HTTP. The additional protection provided always counts in the advent of any cyber attack. Respect others. Having respect for others' privacy and confidentiality is crucial, especially that more and more people are connected to the internet. This is important in every regard. Log out. Every time you complete your work and don't intend to use the system, log out of the system. This is a preemptive measure, as it avoids prying eyes from breaking into your account. We will now discuss the job prospects and market trends in cybersecurity. Now we will discuss the cybersecurity job prospects. The job prospects include, 
cybersecurity specialist, cybersecurity consultant, incident responder, cybersecurity administrator, cybersecurity manager, cybersecurity auditor, IT forensic expert, vulnerability assessor, penetration tester, cybersecurity engineer. Let us now see the cybersecurity market trends. After a global cybersecurity market forecast was predicted by Statista.com, it was observed that the global market for cybersecurity is projected to grow from $167.1 billion in 2019 to $248.26 billion by 2023, attaining a 10.4% CAGR. The expenditure on worldwide security on identity access management was at $10.58 billion in 2019. The forecast also predicted that expenditure on security services, the largest chunk of the information security market, also reached $64.24 billion in 2019 as well. Let us now look into the role of cybersecurity analyst and how to become a cybersecurity analyst. Cybersecurity analyst is one of the most rewarding career options in the field of cybersecurity. An analyst in general collects, translates, and uses complex data to design actionable steps to improve processes and optimize results bringing value to the organization. Every day, analysts assess company and client needs, receive information, and analyze it, looking for any trends or areas for improvement. A security analyst ensures sensitive and proprietary information of an organization to be safe and secure. It is a vital role to detect and rectify issues or defects in the applications, security systems and programs of an organization. It is the duty of the cybersecurity analyst to suggest ways to enhance the overall security and communicate the specific measures to be taken. Cybersecurity analyst creates, maintains, and controls the measures to make sure computer networks are regulated and monitored. How to become a cybersecurity analyst? The first step is to earn a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity, IT, computer science, or a related field. The second step is to complete an internship to obtain experience or a hands on training in a computer related field. The third step is to gain special credentials by obtaining certification after training. The fourth step is to pursue for entry-level positions in general IT or security in any organization. What are the cybersecurity analyst job prospects? Cybersecurity analysts have excellent job opportunities and rewarding career prospects. Cybersecurity analysts enjoy high salaries when compared with other computer and IT professionals. Let us now look into the top 10 cyber certifications and training. The top 10 cybersecurity certifications are 1. Isica, COBIT, Control Objectives for Information and Related Technology, 2. Isica, CHIT, Certified in Governance of Enterprise IT, 3. CompTSI SA, Cybersecurity Analyst, 4. CHE, Certified Ethical Hacker, 5. ISC2, CCSP, CCSP Certified Cloud Security Professional, 6. Google Cloud Platform Professional Security, 7. CompTIA, Security Plus, 8. Isica, CISA, Certified Information Systems Auditor, 9. Isica, CRISC, Certified in Risk and Information Systems Control, 10. Isica, CISM, Certified Information Security Manager. Suppose you take training and certification exam guidance from Invensys Learning. You get many benefits and advantages. The Invensys Learning Advantage includes interactive instructor led certification training programs either accredited by respective governing bodies or in line with their guidelines. Lifetime access to learning management system, LMS, access to live classes, assignments, and industry-driven case studies, highly qualified, certified, and accredited trainers.